Greetings to you all. Greetings and welcome to this broadcast. Another unfortunate day in our country's history. As you join, please let me know whether you can hear me clearly and can also see clearly. I'm here to speak to you today about the Guyana Teachers Union strike and what the criminal bunch are describing as, when I say criminal, I speak to the disregard for the constitution and they are doing that which is unconstitutional, illegal. The constitution of this country has within it laws that govern all Guyanese. Thank you, Susan, thank you for the feedback. So you can see and hear me clearly, wonderful. And the laws of Guyana are very clear they are enshrined in the constitution and within that constitution there are various laws that govern govern how we ought to conduct ourselves I greatly appreciate the feedback. And let us have the conversation. The Guyana Teachers Union, according to the PPP, the union is engaged in what they call an illegal strike unlawful strike. Then they've decided to say that through their permanent secretaries that they're going to cut our teachers' salaries as of next month as a penalty for being engaged in strike action. The teachers must return to their classrooms or they're going to cut their pay. Oh, okay. And here finale is saying that teachers should be patient. I want you all to hear the kind of language we have floating in our, in our country. Teachers must be patient. You must wait until the administration gives to you your own money. Because it doesn't seem as if our political figures in this country, I'm speaking to both APNU AFC and the PVP. It doesn't seem as if you all have gotten the message yet that you should be honest and straightforward with the Guyanese people. No political party pays any teacher in this country or pays any public servant. You all need to stop this foolishness. Our money comes from the treasury. There, there is a treasury in which Guyanese money is to be accounted for. You all need to stop this stupidness. Nobody is asking a political figure for an increase. You all need to stop it. And because you've been cultured into behaving this way, you don't know the deal with these people. Shalom, Pastor Joshua, good to see my brother. You all need to get this right. There is no political figure. I don't care whether you PPP, PNC, whatever you are. You do not pay public servants. We have to get this right from now. Or your strike would mean nothing if you don't understand what I'm saying to you. We are not paid by a political party. Therefore, in your bid to receive, what you do is you demand that they pay you from the treasury that which is ours. They are just responsible for holding the money for us and dispensing this money, utilizing this money in our best interest and according to our demands. This country is called the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. A country that's called a republic is a state that is governed by people, not by politicians. The word republic means people govern the nation through representation, meaning Irfan Ali. Well, not him, because he has no sense. Barajaglio, no sense either. Norton, you weak as a, as, a, as a chicken just out of an egg. But at the end of the day, those political elements who are in the House of Assembly, they represent the people. They don't lead anybody.
So when you're talking about their constituents and their constituencies, which would be the blaze of constituents of the people, they make it seem as if they lead a constituency. No, you represent the constituency. You don't lead anybody. And the people tell you what they want. They don't ask you. I am hoping that this strike action, I've called on the GPSU, I've called on Trade Union Congress, I've called on all y'all, I call on every last one of y'all. Please come out and shut this whole nation down so Ali and everybody could get the message. I'm telling y'all, this is your only chance for Ali, Jagdio, and all of them to get a clear message as to who runs this Guyana because they don't understand yet. Not everybody must get a message here. Don't be swayed into saying, oh, the PNC is supporting us, so we're going to be nice to the PNC. This is across the board. Every political representative must get the message straight this time around. You are not giving us some favor, granting us some favor. You are not paying us. We are telling you what we demand. And then you instruct Ashton Singh Bharat to give the people from the treasury that which they demand. Nobody's asking us some favor. Please, please, please talk to us and consider uh, that we need to have a decent living wage. It is not going down like that. We are not, we are not paupers begging for somebody. For somebody's assistance and somebody's pity and understanding. No. You are going to give to the teachers that which they demand. You are not leaders of this country. You are representatives of this country. Get it right. But you see, when you all look up to these people as leaders, that's what happens to you. You look up to them as though they lead you. You govern them because we are called the cooperative republic. You cannot have republic without people leading. We are labeled as a democratic state. What does that mean? Demo, demo, demo. Speaks to people. Crassy means they govern. That's why you have theocracy, which is God, governs. Democracy, people, govern. If people govern Guyana, then who the hell are these morons to tell you that you have to be patient and you have to go back to work or else? Or else what? Or else you all don't have a job. Any politician, and I'm warming up for y'all. You see, all I, 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 I went out with them today, not for long, but I'm warming up. Because this time I'm not going out on the street to play with anybody. So if you all want to play and be weak, I'm not dealing with you. This is the time where all of the workers in this country who are called public servants must make this administration and any other administration know that you are not paying us. So we're not asking you to pay us. We tell you that you are there in, in the House of Assembly to represent us. We are the leaders because we decide whether you get there or not. So you could be our leader. You are chosen by people to go to the House of Assembly to make laws and make decisions, enact policies and others, that would benefit the people, not yourselves. So here's my deal when I start with you, Dancing Priya. I want you to come. Don't, don't do any subliminal foolishness. You, you post my face as you do. Post, don't post anything else. Post this. And answer this question to all teachers in this country. Are you, Priya Manik Chan, prepared to work for a teacher's salary? A head teacher. We're not even teaching in classroom yet. Let me start higher up the scale. Are you, Priya Manik Chan, prepared to work for a teacher's wage? Tell the whole world, since you care so much. Bring Saddam Hussein to the table. All y'all, talk to me. Are you prepared, Jack Dio, to work for a teacher's salary? Now, let me go down the scale. Are you prepared, pre to work for a temporary qualified master's salary because you are unqualified to teach anybody? So let me deal with you. You haven't been to CPC. You have never even graduated from college, pre I want to talk to teachers about anything. You have had to write lesson plan in your, in, since you're born. Have you ever been had, told that you have to write schemes of work, Priya? Have you ever written one single journal at the end of a week? Have you ever graded one test paper for any student in our schools? Get from here. You're not qualified to talk to any teacher. You need to be taught about what it's like to be a teacher. So you, you're not even a part of this conversation. You are disqualified from speaking to anything regarding teaching in any school because you've never done it. So don't come to tell anybody you, 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 you are a minister of education and you're responsible for any teacher. Responsible for whom? When? You, how could you 
you have, how can you have a country, I ask y'all again, that is called the richest in the world, if you count how many people we have and how much money we have at our disposal. And our teachers are the lowest paid in the whole Caribbean. Huh? All of Latin America, all of South America, all of North America, all of Europe, all of Asia, pay more than God. Yo, 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 that good? And teachers must be decent, nice, easy going. Do not ruffle anybody's feathers. Because at the end of the day, Priya will say that you are forming political alliances and you are willing to be led by a politician. No, 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 no. You could play that game all you want. The people are on to you all to recognize that you, Priya Manitam, would never work for a teacher's salary. Because you are you are in the Ministry of Education. Okay, maybe you went to university. You, you, you say you, you finished law school. So you are you are an untrained graduate. If you're in the classroom. Huh? If you, Priya Manichan, are an untrained graduate, if you were to get into the, midst, the classroom to teach, which I doubt you qualify to do anyway. But let's say they put you because we have a shortage of teachers. You, madam, would be classified as an untrained graduate. You. You, who want to have so much talking again, huh? you are classified as an untrained graduate. Are you prepared, Priya Manichan, to be paid the salary of an untrained graduate? Tell us all, which is $200,000 a month. Are you prepared? And then you take home one something. Are that sum of money? If your answer is no, then get out of my face. You have nothing to say about any teacher. Because it shows us all. It shows the whole world how doggish you people are. You, you work for $1.9 or $1.8 plus million dollars a month. You. We're not talking about any property you own that's on rent. Because you still haven't come forward to talk about that either. You have still not stepped one foot to tell anybody in Guyana if what I said is untrue. Do you own properties in Windsor Estate pre -managed? And Come and tell us. I need to know the answer to the question. Are they on rent? Which means... My internet was misbehaving. So is it better? All right, somebody call me. Tell me if you're good. Are we back? Can you hear me clearly? Are we back in action? Somebody call me. You got bumped off. I await your response. Tell me if you're good. Uh, excellent. So let me talk again. Let me start. Let me, let me deal with y'all. Because maybe you've missed the part where you spoke before. Priya Manik Chan, are you prepared to work for a, an untrained graduate salary? If the answer is no, you need to tell us why you should work for $1.8 plus million dollars per month. And then tell a teacher who earns 105, 106, 106 or seven thousand dollars a month that they must go back to school because they must be satisfied with what they have. Do you see how disrespectful you rodents are? Huh? Do you see how disrespectful you people really are? I'm not here to play with y'all. And that's why whoever wants to be to me, to me nice, I really can't deal with y'all. Because I don't think that you, you gather yet how disrespectful Jack Dio, who is earning a president's pension of two plus million dollars per month, is. Jagio's pension is 75 or 87 percent of what Efren Ali earns as a president. And he got the nerve to tell y'all about what is being political and, and GTU's records have not been audited for, since 1989. Well, show us Gawu's record. Show us the Allied, the Agriculture Workers Union record. Jagio, come to the table now and show all of Guyana when Gawu has been audited. Show us, please. Let us see. Since, since, since only GTU has not been audited. And since you waited, or you, you, you of all people, when Janet died, you led this country for eight years, like you forget, or ten. You creature, you come and tell us why you had GTU not having the records audited. You who were a junior minister of finance took all this time to expose GTU. Huh? So you've been in all this time. How is it for 10 years on your watch, GT wasn't auditing, you never a problem? How is it when Priya Manicha went out to say that, that the whole world is seeing when, when they, they were against Nicolette Henry in 2018, thereabout, Priya went out to say, listen, the whole world is out against these people because Granger is now a dictator. And it's an embarrassment to the, to the country. 
You didn't tell, you didn't go then to say expose them because GTU is not audited. Oh, now you jump to say that they've not been audited. Well, show us Gawu's audit, audited record, please. Please show us the audit for Gawu for the Guyana Agricultural Workers Union, the sugarcane workers whose president support y'all. Show us. Show us one who's president of Gawu and sits in the House of Assembly as a member of Parliament. Since Coretta McDonald is so bad, come to the table and talk to me today. So parents, parents of students, of children, listen to me. You should be the, the ones in front of this protest. I'm calling a principal to the primary school. I know many of your politicals here can't talk like Lorimer who said. Lorimer. Lorimer of all people who said. And he's the kind of people who talk to prayer. Madam Minister, please open the schools. So the parents can go into school to teach your children. That, that's how much sense this boy got. And he reflects Ethan uh, uh, intellectual capacity. He's, he's just on par with Ethan in terms of reasoning. He's just a, a not below Priya in terms of reasoning. Lorimer. So Lorimer is saying, please open the school go doors so the parents can go into school to teach your children. You dumb nut. You don't realize that you could teach them at home? Huh? You have to open school to teach your child? That's all the sense that you have. If you want to teach your children, can you teach them in your house? Oh, I get it. Your home is not conducive to anybody learning, and that's why you are the way you are. Because your house is definitely, definitely not conducive for any child to learn. So you have to open the school doors and let the children in the school, then you can teach them. And you, you, I could see why you could support the PPP. Please, man, you all go and support them. The likes of you need to support Irfan because you all reason alike. You can't teach a child at home. So all the parents who have a problem with teachers not being in school, you are incapable of teaching your child at home. Which establishes the teacher's point, by the way. It's I tell you, you check me yourselves all the time. The fact that you cannot teach your child at home shows how important teacher is. Lorma and others. The fact that many of you parents cannot teach your child at home should make you come out to the road to say, listen, pay these people because they're doing what I can't. Duh! Tomorrow morning, I hope his mother is hearing me, I'm taking my son out to protest. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm out to me. I, I hope other parents can be brave like me because I'm scared of everything in the world, including a cockroach and a frog. Listen to me. Tomorrow morning, please, mother, dress my son for school. And I'm taking him outside with, outside with the teachers to walk on the road to make a point to pray money, John. Because you need to get the message. I understand that I cannot spend all day teaching my child. Hence, a school is in place to teach him certain things. Therefore, you will pay that teacher. You will pay my child's teacher, my child's principal. You pay every teacher in this country. That which is equivalent to them being comfortable like you, madam. The fact that you parents are crying that the teachers are not at school tells you how important they are because if they weren't important, then why do why you teach up yourself? My two daughters were homeschooled. My son can be homeschooled. But I want him to have the social interaction with other people and they said it's okay, you can't so homeschool in Guyana. Give me the right to teach my child at home then. Huh? You mean to tell me that y'all can't see how, how disrespectful these, these chicken heads are? You don't have respect for anybody. And the typical nature of the PP is to disrespect people. Hey, Rick Fritzi was asking for payment, but I missed that part. Lorma, Lorma wants the government, as they say, the government to pay him to teach his child. Why they should put you in jail? And if you're teaching the child, Mr. Lorma, and those parents who want to agree with you being as asinine as you are, you have to also give the child an exam. You have to also mark common entrance boy. You have to grade the SBAs, sir. So you and C-Sec can give you that. You have to tell Ms. Sada Kadir, who's the, the, the chief, the, uh, the the exams official for Guyana, you must tell Sada Kadir in Queen's College compound, go there to exams your division and submit SBAs, you parents like Lorma, you morons. You go to make, since you want to look good, Madam Minister, I'm begging Madam Minister, open the school first, Madam Minister. You go to Sada Kadir with your child or the, or the, people, PP, the, the PPP's children, take their SBAs, because don't mark anybody else's. Grade them and submit those SBAs to CSEC. And when you're done, great common entrance because you and Priya will set the paper. 
and you pray with great common entrance all across Ghana. Since teachers are important, so let them stay home and all do the teachers' work then. You all got brain like Pilori. Y'all. Half of y'all who support A Finale. 99% of y'all have brains like Pilori. Because there's no normal person who supports somebody who can't talk, who can't spell, and who can't reason. You know, I'm not saying who didn't go to school. Because they have to go to school to, to be able to reason. My issue has never been with Ifanadi's qualification. It is with his ability to reason. He is daft. Priya looks as if she has a mental disorder of some sort because the way she reasons boggles my mind. I can't see somebody who earns 1.8 or whatever million dollars a month telling somebody else, you must be, go back to the school because $187,000 per month is enough for you. But it's not enough for me. What kind of creature reasons like that? And parents will be willing. Parents are willing to sit back and support an administration that tells you that the people who are responsible for your child's future in terms of academia must be paid next to nothing. Because after all, they already got 35%. 35% in relation to what? Man, Jack, you're you, you said you studied in Russia to be some economist. So you should be able to teach everybody in this country economics. And boy, you, you, I, I believe you went under the university. You must have been a mole rat or, or, or something that you used to live under the school. You didn't go in the class. Because I can't see you studied economics and telling anybody that with an inflation rate as we've experienced in Guyana, even 50% increase is okay for them. Boy, at a... Up 20 pound, 25 pound. Bottle of cooking gas, tank of cooking gas, was once $2,100. $2,500. It's now $4,700 within a year or two. You do the math. We have had almost 100% increase in cooking gas. Gasoline was $110, $1,708 per liter. It's now 225 at Shell gas station. Do the math, Mr. 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 Economist. I used to buy milk for a leaf for $200 and $300 for, for the, the two kilogram packet. It's now 800 in some stores. Do the math, Mr. 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 Economist. As the old people say, Bonham must be rolling in the grave. Burnham must be rolling his grave to know he sent you to Russia, of all people. Of all people, best Burnham would plant 50 more coconut trees and ensure that we got coconut oil to eat, to drink. And coconut milk to put in porridge. I don't know why he sent you to Russia. To do what? Parents. If you are complaining, if you are complaining about the fact that you cannot teach your children, then by right, basic common sense will dictate, should dictate that you should go out to the street to demand that teachers are treated right to go back into the classroom. Because none of your parents can tell me that you are okay if you are a teacher or were a teacher, that whatever you work for now and Priya says, accept this, accept 6.5 increase, don't fuss. Because it's illegal to go to strike. Let me talk to you all who have this illegal stupidness in your mouth. Because the PPP is learning the word illegal. They don't know many words, by the way. I've discovered these people don't know a lot of words. So they hold on to one word. Illegal, illegal. Like, like, Abnu, like Norton them used to say, um, installed, installed, installed. That's all they knew. Installed, 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 installed. Then it was illegitimate. Illegitimate. Then the U.S. person, somebody from the U.S., of course. Master got to teach him a word again. Master said that the PPP would have been installed. Oh, it's an installed government. You hold on to one word and sing it all the time in people's head because you have the view that the normal thinker is so shallow that he will just grab a word that you say and just run with it forever. So you're installed. But why don't you uninstall them? It's about time. You have to wait for five years to, to remove somebody who's installed. Hence, they're not being there legally. Not you very weak. You have no power. Siran Lynch made you into a little church cat. 
And I, why am I calling out? No, because you should be the at the head of every protest line in this country. You should be the one who called all teachers, all nurses, police officers, soldiers, everybody. You should have the power to have at least 100,000 people on the streets in Ghana right now. You can't even call half of those who voted for PNC on the road right now. You. You see, unlike Irfan, I am qualified to homeschool my, any child of mine up until university level I can teach my children. You can't. Priya certainly cannot. I am qualified. And within my family, they are at least my sister, my brother, my in-law. I don't call him my brother, but my brother-in-law. Me, my wife, my daughters. At least 10 people in my household, immediate, are qualified to teach children and teachers. At least 10. We could, we could start a school now if we wanted to. From, from the cradle to the grave, we can teach you. Think about that. From preschool, nursery school, primary school, high school, college, university. People in my house can teach all of those levels. Ali, you can't even teach your child to say the word reparative. Reparative. You can't even teach him that. Not reparative. You can't even teach him to say reparative. You can't teach him to say valedictorian or valedictory. But you could talk to teachers. You could tell teachers to be patient and wait till you decide. Who are y'all? Who are you? Parents, you must teach your child. My son is going out tomorrow to see teachers on the road. You know why? Because he must never have an experience in his life where he doesn't understand why he's at home. He's not at home on holiday. He must go out to... Right, he can't say cervical, cervical. Teach your child, Ali. You teach your son to say cervical. You big president. Two point whatever, five whatever million dollars a month and you can't say cervical. You, and tell teachers to be patient. Your teacher was impatient, that's why you are where you are. You, a fan, had a teacher who was very impatient because she looked at you and said, boy, this doesn't make any sense. And he looked at you and said, this, listen here, this one here, he will, he will, he will not be left behind. Pass him through all the classes and get him out as quickly as possible. Your teachers did that. You have the most impatient teachers in your life. That's why you can't say cervical. You can't say cervical. You say cervical. You can't say reparative. You say reparative. And heaven help me try to say what you said for valedictory. You can't say valid valedictorian. You. Your teacher was the most impatient of all. All teachers you've had throughout your life were impatient with you. And that's why you are the way you are. But we have patient teachers now who are patient with our children. Priya's grammar teacher was most impatient because she begins a sentence with and. She stood in the house assembly and said that she is a preposition. You're done self. And you could talk but teach. You can't value teacher because you have experience. One that's good enough. How can you value that which you've never been? And how can you value one of whom or from whom you've never benefited? Huh? You can't value anything teachers do because you're dunce. I value them. Miss Gloria Britton, one of the best principals on the planet. Why I saw Miss, Miss Britton, I know sometimes you watch me. I beg you, please. Come out to retirement. I know you, 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 you aged. And I call you old. Come out, please, for the sake of prayer. And go, please, Mr. Ed I beg you all, go to Georgetown. Please go to Central Ministry and sit that girl down along with Saddam and teach them how to be professionals in this business here, man. Priya, you? 
How you could stand in the house of Sammy and tell anybody she is a preposition? And then tell teachers, you all need to go back to school and teach. Teach you. They need to go teach you. Pre and I are friends. You th my daughter, she thought Pre Pre and I were friends. Pre Pre and I were okay until she crossed the line because Pre Pre said, I'm, Pre Pre had the nerve to say, I'm racist because I call her out for what she did. How are you going to racist if, if I said that you did something that was wrong? Huh? So you got so stupid like Jagger, the anybody who says anything against the PP is racist? No, you're not friend, my friend anymore. We're not friends anymore. We are not friends anymore because none of my friends reason like you. I thought I had hope in you, but no, man, you make my hand fall. Hmm. We're not friends. Pre, you and I are not friends anymore because you have no sense. And as a teacher for 18 plus years, I always told my students, stupidity, like oil, it is rub off. If you walk too close, there's an electrical field, a magnetic field of stupidity is concerned. And if you walk too close, a stupid person, it will rub off. The, the, the voltage will jump or cut you. So you, my friend, you and I are not friends. My friend, no reason like you. No. You are past people. You are... You are the most disrespectful Minister of Education I've ever seen. You are disqualified. You are not qualified to be Minister of Education if it were a position for which you have to apply and be interviewed thereafter based on your qualifications you, you gain that position. You would never even be called you, Priya. And that's a fact. You know it's a fact. You, you can't sit before any Teaching Service Commission to, to even ask to be the head of a department, you, because you're untrained. You are untrained, you are unskilled, and you are unintelligent, especially in grammar. You are one, you, you jump, you neglect all your own symbols. Who would have one set of children write an exam this year, and you grade them and say, oh my God, we've got 70% improvement in English language, and it's a totally different group of people who wrote the exam. You didn't re-examine didn't re -examine the same set from last year to see, give them back the test in the same areas of, 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 of uh, questioning, see how they respond this year, and you say, okay then, the same batch of candidates were given another exam, and we now see they've been a 70% improve, improvement. No, you go and have a whole new set of students. Write an exam and say they've been 70% imp improvement. You have no sense. You. You are one who said that if because of COVID children were at home, there was learning loss. You said that. You untrained. That's why you don't have sense in how people learn. And I said to you, Priya, stop saying this. The world has, it's on my page. Your people, uh, 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 lizards, you who support this, this wicked group of people, go on my page. You iguanas, go to my page and check for the evidence. Where I said to Priya during COVID time, stop saying that is learning loss. Stop it. It is a stupid statement to make because I've studied child psychology. I'm a trained grade one, class one, secondary school science teacher. I possess a degree in environmental sciences passed with credit, with honors from the University of Guyana. Me. So I'm qualified to talk to you. I said, Priya, stop this stupidness. But you keep jumping learning loss. And it was amazing to know that learning loss, Pri didn't realize that when CSEC results came out, Guyana topped the Caribbean. The learning loss, Pri didn't see that, hold on a minute, how could we top the region if we had learning loss? That's how dunce you are. Because you wouldn't listen to advice. I tried to protect you from looking, because then, then you were my girl. And I said, Pri Pri, don't do this to yourself. I was there saying, Pri Pri, don't do this. Don't say that. Don't talk about learning loss because I know what's going to happen to you. What happened when the results came out? The students topped the whole Caribbean. 20 something subjects, grade one, and they had learning loss. That's how much sense you got. Because for you, you have to be in a school that the PPP built for you to learn. There's nothing called learning at home. There's nothing called remote learning because you don't know what that means. You're, ne you're, never, you're never trained, so you don't understand what it means. For you, learning means you have to put your backpack on your shoulders and go to school 
and then teach us to start writing on the chalkboard, and that's when you learn, because that's how you were taught. Hence, you missed that missed didn't write, and to begin a sentence. Parents, if you want your child, parents, if you want your child to end up like Priya and Irfan, you stay home and encourage the teachers to go back to school. But if you value your child's education, come out to the road and let the world know that you want your teachers to be paid the best in the whole Caribbean and maybe the world. That's what you need to do. Come out. And y'all y'all are so important teachers, that they're sending police officers to watch and record what you're saying. That's the kind of party we have in this country. That's the kind of people we have in Ghana, where the PPP are using inspectors, assistant commissioners, probably, superintendents, I know. You all come, send them out to the road in the khaki clothes to go and watch teachers protest. And wait patiently to arrest them if possible. That's the kind of people we have in, in, in Ghana now, because the PPP, the PPP only knows because they aren't, they aren't highly educated people. So they know, only know how to assault Guyanese into subjection. They cannot reason. And Norton only knows to host press conferences. That's all he knows. He will host a press conference. And he, and he will entertain questions from the left and from the right. Then from the back of the room and from the front. And Norton feels very important because he can field questions and he can respond to them. And in his view, he's done so well. When this country is crumbling at the hand of a, a group of miscreants in relation to the law, they don't respect any law. So let me just speak to you parents who want to support this notion that the PPP, of the PPPs that, st that states that teachers are engaged in an illegal strike. Let me, let me make it clear to you all. First of all, let me give it number one. The union is on record up until today of saying that they are asking the administration to engage in a conversation. Um, dummies at the back, if you are asking for a conversation, it can be an illegal action because you have sought to have a conversation. The representative of the workers, who would be, you call them the union, they are asking for a conversation with the, with the employers. That is not an illegal act. That's a legal act according to, the, according to the law, the industrial laws of Guyana. You have to have agreements for employment. So the industrial act is saying, listen, if the employees are aggrieved, they have a right through the representatives, representatives to say, listen, we want to have a conversation. That's it. The union has done that. Airfan uh, says it's illegal. Priya says it's illegal. Jagis is illegal. But Airfan called teachers to state house, not the union representatives, and had the state media report that teachers engage Airfan to express their concerns and what they want. And Airfan said he met with teachers. That is illegal. You dunce people, you all don't have sense and call yourself leaders of this country. That is illegal because you bypass the union. Now look at y'all. Look at y'all with no sense. Huh? You are the first and only president in this country to ever bypass a union. Invite you just to our house. We own state house. You don't own it. You invite you just to state house to talk. And those who you handpicked came and they got up on the microphone and you have them blasting all across the media. And Jack Dio said as well, that he's not going to talk to any representative. He's going to go straight to the people. That's illegal if you don't know. Those are illegal acts because the laws don't have any bypassing of anybody. The laws of Ghana state plainly that their unions, their constitutional bodies, the unions are able to engage the employers to speak to the benefit of the employees. You dunce heads don't understand that. So you call the strike illegal, but you're inviting teachers to say that is legal? Get from here! Get out of my face. Teachers, strike more. GPSU, the public service unit, Patrick Yard, come out from where you are. Limp if you've got a limp. And lead this nation out of this foolishness. These PPP dictators think they could bull rush anybody. Y'all, I'd be dead first. 
That's why I tell you, you must come and bark up my tree wrong, man. Bark up my tree and tell me I have to do it. Remember Priya said? Remember Priya said that I have to send my child to school? They didn't go anywhere. For all the years of, of, of SARS-CoV-2, I told you, you cannot make my child go to any school. You're a mad woman. You send yours. Give her KFC, Burger King, and pizza and send her to school. You come and try to make my child. Tell me, foolish you own my child. You're a mad woman. The child belongs to the state. Which state? You ever saw my child birth certificate saying that she belongs to Guyana? Huh? Father's name, Guyana. Mother's name, Guyana. And then with the same Matthew came and said, Parents, send your children to school. That's how daft you are. You don't have sense. You don't reason well. I don't blame you. I blame it your impatient teachers. I blame your impatient teachers. I blame your, your impatient teachers. Now I'm asking here. I am asking for parents to understand. Parents of Utukri Primary School, I am the head of your, your PTA body. I am not speaking to you on behalf of that body. I'm speaking to you as a parent. Understand the struggle. Understand the fight. This is not about Coretta leading anybody anywhere. Because Coretta McDonald can't make me do anything. Norton, 10 times worse. No weak man can make me do anything. This is about a class of people called the PPP elites who believe that they could just tell Guyanese teachers what they want and be disrespectful. You also see the kind of things people post on her page and how she speaks about teachers. Huh? You saw Irfan Ali the other day in Burbis so or wherever he was, got an engineer like a little child. Huh? That's the kind of people you got. Come talk to the people, man. Why do why this, why this, they have street lights on? You, you got this engineer. Ali, you never went to university. And you have an engineer who's qualified. Maybe an electrical engineer. You have been, you have, I thought like Jamaican, I don't say have. You have been nowhere. And you could tell an engineer to answer to you. You dance. If he talk to you about ohms, voltage, amperes, you can't answer. But you could ask him why street lights aren't on and he must answer to the people. You are look how you treat a professional country. Look at how you treated a professional in our country. And you know what you did? You ensured that you went there to do it in the presence of your people, your supporters, to insult an African man. That's what you did. Why didn't you go, Ali? And ask guys, Sukoli, why why skeleton can't produce sugar yet? Why didn't you go and ask guys guy Suko leader, the Indian one? Tell us all. Come here. Answer the people. Why we can't produce sugar? Why did you do that, Irfan? Huh? But you can humiliate a young African engineer when you can't even say the word reparative and you can't say cervical, but you could insult an engineer who went to university. Which university you went to? IFLOT? Huh? I tell you, you are an eggball president. You are an eggball president. And Polori president. You are not in any way in David Granger's shoe in terms of intellectual cap capability. You are not, definitely not in Bonham's shoe. Why would him call Bonham and your name in the same sentence? Even Janet got more sense than you because she went to university. You have been nowhere. You are a Polori, Eggball, and Barra president. So you're not qualified to talk to any teacher about any negotiation. Sit at the back of the class. And learn to say the word cervical. Reparative. Valedictory. Valedictorian. Learn to talk. Y'all are provoking me with the way you're treating our teachers. I tell y'all already. There are two sets of people I don't play with. Our children and our teachers. Because I understand their value. I've been one. I have seen the power of a teacher. To mold a child and you've got enough to disrespect these people, huh? They must go back to school. As well as what? Oh, and you'll cut their pay, huh? You will cut their pay. So that's the kind of game you want to play? You will cut their pay for March. In March, you'll see in their salary reflected deductions. And you all will accept these stupid people in front of you, say the leaders. Patrick Yard. 
Correct to you, the President of the Grand Trade Union Congress. All the unions of this country must come out in response to this dictatorial behavior. There is no way that you could tell me. There's no politics here because I don't, I don't do the PNC. I don't want anything with y'all. Because you're too weak and you let this country run down a drain that I, I can't handle. This is now where the people must win. The people must win. This has gone too far. When you see politicians could tell you that they are prepared to make a teacher suffer in terms of payment, knowing these people got GPL to pay, courts to pay, some got BM so to pay, some have got uh, 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 banks to pay, you would threaten them? Knowing that if you only cut their salary, they cannot make it for a month. So you decide that you're going to show them who's boss. Huh? And you almost accept this from these, these, these snakes? No, no, no. You are bringing out the worst in me, and that's what you want to see. Because you will not disrespect my son's teacher. I'm standing on behalf of my son's teacher. My son's principal. You will not disrespect my son's teacher. From Mutukle Primary School, from Mackenzie High School, my alma mater, you are not going to disrespect them. I will deal with y'all. Why must you, Priya Manichan, Bara Jagdio, live in Pradaville to a Priya Solar house? You remember the court story? It said Priya Solar land in Pradaville too? Okay. So you, Jagdio, why must you live in Pradaville too? Why must you live in Pradaville too and teach you live in, 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 uh, in, in, in Al Boys Town, Tiger Bay? Some extension, some squatting area somewhere. You. Wait, man. Th wait. So the people who mold the nation, and Priya said, you all are so important to us teachers. You are telling me that you must live in a, over, overlooking the sea, the ocean. You must have an estate at Pradaville too. And teachers must accept $200,000 a month. Huh? You must be able to go to Amici and eat $70,000 steak. And if a teacher only risks that, they are evicted. Because they can't pay their rent. You could eat in a steak, Jack Dion Priya, somebody's whole rent, and you dogs will tell a teacher that they must go back to school and accept anything. You're mad people. You're Polari president. You're Barra president. Eggball president. And you them half eggball. You're not a whole eggball president. You them eggball, we're cut in half. They fry half the egg in a ball. You, you not even qualified to be a whole eggball president, Ali. You! You're a half eggball president. And you could disrespect any teacher in this country. You could go to Amici and buy one steak, and that's a whole rent or two months rent for a teacher. And you could you you call me that. Teachers must accept that from y'all. You, you mustn't you must not eat where we eat. You mustn't go where we go. You mustn't you must not hang out where we hang out because y'all are unqualified. So no teacher could rent Marriott Hall for a party, and that's what y'all want. You want teachers to be so low. So low and downtrodden that they must never be on your level. To hell with you! I am coming out tomorrow with my son. My son will be dressed for school and he'll be on the road. And he's going to learn as a boy that your teachers march for a better way of life. You would not disrespect them because after he sees them marching in the sun or in the rain, and they suffer so much in the sun. Let your teacher call me one day to say that my son is not listening in the classroom. I will tan your hide. Because you'll see how much the teacher suffered for a better way of life. So you're going to understand that there's value in what they do. Let me hear them say you're rude. Because you will never do that. But I'm just saying, let me hear your teacher complain to me that you've been rude to school after I take it tomorrow to show you how they suffer for money. You let me see you disrespect any teacher in the school. I will wail your behind. Because he must have value for people who suffer. All of your cotton candy parents and your lollipop parents, you could understand what Pri is saying. I would never understand it. I will never understand or accept somebody who makes $1.8 million a month telling me that I should accept 200000 You are disrespectful and you're presenting. You are projecting on teachers a caste system. Have I not warned you all? Have I not warned you 
that these people have a caste mentality. So they're telling you they must earn $2 million a month and you must earn 200000 And you must accept that. That's what they're telling you all. They're telling you indirectly, actually directly, that Jagdio, Priya, Anil, Frank and all of them must earn how much money per month? But you, 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 must be way below us on a consistent basis. When that happens, Apnu does the same thing. They're no different. When that happens, let me tell you what it does. It creates a divide in your society. It's called an economic divide. It's called a social divide. It's stratification of your society. Meaning they strata here. One level, another level, another level, another level. So teachers must be below here all the time. A teacher in Ghana can never live in Pradaville too unless you sell drugs. Or you thief so much that they never catch you. And that's no ordinary stealing. That is what they want. They create a stratified system, layers of society, so teachers, nurses, police officers will always dangle below, below here. So then what happens? The rich boys at the top, when their child has to pass the exam, they pay you. They know you only earn $100,000. They say, listen, come here. Take $300,000 and, and slip my son the paper so he can see the exam before. You only earn 100000 and in one minute you can get three times the salary. What would the average teacher do if they're weak? They'll sell their soul. That's really good. They're going to sell out. They're going to sell. I want you to understand now. Why do you stratify society? Because the wicked at the top control those at the bottom. So a policeman will be told, listen here. You see the one on me? How are you talking? Talking much? Listen. Take this $500,000 or take $200,000 and arrest him tomorrow so we could weaken him. And, and Polori police, Chinese police, a half me fry rice for free police would come and arrest me in a heartbeat. You know why? Because he has gotten two or three times his salary in one minute to arrest me. He doesn't care how it looks. In his mind, he could buy two rims for his car, for his Toyota Corolla, or for his Toyota uh, East. While Jack Dio drives a Lexus, or our, our money, by the way, would buy it, a Land Cruiser Prado that we buy. You don't understand. Society is stratified to create control. And those at the bottom are always controlled by those at the top. How do you break that cycle? You break that when those at the bottom look up and say, to hell with you, you're not going to control us anymore. Because our children must not live below yours. My stance today, my stance tomorrow, will never be on me. It's about my son and my daughters recognizing that no politician must just be elected tomorrow and be above you. They are your servants, and I will make you understand that they are your servants. I call on fathers. If you understand what they said to you, you'll be out on the road tomorrow. Don't, even if it's half an hour, I beg you, come out and let your children understand that you're not standing against the PUP. You're not standing against PNC. You're standing for teachers who are valuable. Miss Gloria Britton, Miss Janice Gibson, these ladies had an impact on my life. Mr. Cleveland Thomas taught me, taught me. That's why I'm such a strong man. Malcolm Solomon, Mr. Ian Blair, George Daniels was a trade unionist par excellence. George Daniels taught me to be a man, to look at him face to face and argue like man. And then he said, I like this boy, because he understood that I'm a tough cookie. I know walk over. Mighty just taught me how to be a man. Mr. Wilson from the Amsterdam Lateral School. Mr. Samuels. Miss Dotson, Evelyn Dotson. Miss Yearwood. I was taught by some class act. I was never taught by some weak, stupid people. So I've learned. Dr. Chalet in the University of Ghana taught me how to think as a person and be independent in my thought process. Don't be weak. If you are a man, come out tomorrow. Let them, you got a whole 200 teachers in the road, 99% females. What I'm tossing is men. I tell us as men, and you must represent our women. 
protect our women. Pray must see in linen here. You don't come send a police here to harass anybody. Where y'all at? Zanti correct. No, oh, Zanti was my favorite. Mr. Clark, Zanti taught me to be a real man. Zanti taught me about woman everything. I, I love him. I love Mr. Clark because he taught me in school how to be a man. Parents come out tomorrow. Parents come out. They start at 9 o'clock. Come out. Walk with your child. I dress my son for school with his backpack on his back because I need to make a statement to y'all. You, Priyan, are an Irfan. Your son is in, is in school in nations, sitting in the air-conditioned classroom. Y'all. Eustace Wilson, that's correct. From New Amsterdam, at that road school. I was taught by the best. Are you funny, your son? Your son? Your son is in an air-conditioned room at a private school. Ask his teachers how much they paid. And then compare that to what you pay, what you say. What you say, like you pay from Freedom House, our teachers must accept. And you prefer to run a gas to show project rather than paying our teachers. We on the road, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Because you told me, Priya, the teachers are valuable. They teach common entrance and they teach C-Sec. And you, you big them up. You give them a big up prayer. You remember that? For C-Sec. Oh my God. Our teachers are so important. They taught C-Sec and they got all these grades. Well now. Well now. You can't say the people who are important are unlawful in their conduct. Like you can't make up your mind. You're just like Barrett. You can't decide how you, how you want to deal with people now. Teachers let us go out to the parents. As a matter of fact. We're going tomorrow to support our teachers. The workers will be set on, 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 on staff. If your workers want to come out, let's go. I'll give, we will go out on the road. We're going tomorrow to make a one-hour statement. They must know that fathers are out here to stand up and stand out. And all the policemen you want to send, the men will be out there to engage you if you want to ever be, ever be, out of line with our teachers. You're not going to disrespect our females. And you're not going to be, 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 be capturing them as though they're criminals. Go find those who killed the nurse girl in the ward. Lawrence, find them. Find the one who killed the one, whoever killed the, 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 the little angel girl, the young Nelly in, 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 in Lethem, wherever she was. Find those, man. You go find the murderers. Don't go back, match me and teachers. Go find those who are killing our girls and getting off every minute. I find amazing that people are just killing people in Linda nowadays and it's difficult to, to find them. Find the murderers. Find the drug dealers and the smugglers of all the gold and everything. Spy, find them. Teachers are not the only people. The genius have eight, nine, ten policemen around you. What, you, what, do you. what do you think this is? You are sending a message to our teachers. I, I am bringing my son tomorrow to show him. That's what, Ghana, that's what the PPP is doing to policemen. I'm playing with you all. My son is going to learn in the arms of the father a lot of things tomorrow. I will bring my son out tomorrow to show him. You see this here? This is what the PPP is all about. They are intimidators because they cannot reason. They are all about crushing the strength of society. So son, don't deal with these people ever unless they change. Because they are dictatorial. They are hypocrites. They are liars. They got fucked down like a devil. They will say one thing with this side of the tongue and then have something else on the other side. They are absolutely moronic. Because they want to tell you son that they must live in Pradoville in a $200 million house and you must live in some little alley somewhere in a $50,000 or $3 million, $2 million house. Or sometimes you can't even buy a house. You have to rent till you're dead. And these people are telling you that that is where you belong. So my son, as Darby told his son, uh, uh, Shlomo, don't deal with them. I'm teaching my son who to not deal with. Son, Norton is a weak egg. So don't ever deal with him. Because weak people like Norton would watch you burn in the sun and hide. Because he doesn't want to see to get vexed. So don't leave it nothing. Be like sir. You see sir out there, sir standing for his money. Go out, son. Stand like your teachers. When, you, when, you, when they grieve you, stand alone like your father. Stand like a man. You don't have to have company. Stand alone like your daddy. And show the world that you prepare to stand by yourself. At least you're standing for something. Don't be like Norton. Who needs, who needs 50,000 before you could walk and be a man? 
my son, parents will be dressed tomorrow and he go to the road with me. What would you do? Would you go, would you come out tomorrow? Can you come out and show support for our teachers? Do they deserve better? Huh? Why must, your why must a teacher teach your child to be a doctor and the teacher must earn less than the doctor? Is that okay for you? Is that fair? Huh? My son must learn that this party called the PPP, who say that teacher strike is illegal, can have a minister accused of raping and burgling a 16-year-old girl. And that same person, the DPP can say that he would not in any way sit for one minute before a judge an answer. Son, what, look, look who's illegal. Because the law, the law that Priya stood in parliament to read, Priya, Priya of our people, presented the Sexual Offenses Act. And in that act, it states, son, that any man accused, accused of rape is charged immediately, not, not two weeks after. That man has to defend himself. That's what the Sexual Offenses Act states. This girl said that this man buggered her until she bled. And the DPP saw no cause after she was interviewed twice. Forensic interview, not just ordinary interview. She was interviewed twice. Thoroughly. And those interviewers said this is case enough. The DPP said no. And then we couldn't find the girl's son for almost two weeks. We couldn't. We didn't know where she was. And then that girl came out to say that it was a setup. Son, that's the PPP dealing with. And that man said that he was set up. And the supporter said, son, that not supporters, in the House of Assembly, we prior read the same law, son. Where she read the same act, son. Where she tabled that act. In that same house. A PPP minister got up and said that Darmlal will be back. What does it tell you? My son must see what he must never be. GPSU, TUC, Gawu. Let us all come out in the street. This is not political here. This is, they've crossed a line with our teachers. To tell people that they have to take what you say, or are you going to harass, intimidate, belittle, and disrespect them? You have brought out the animal in me, and that's what you all want. Parents, come out. Let's come out tomorrow. Let's walk with the teachers. I think the start from my courts area. They gather around where, where Courts of Citizen Bank is. We're gathering there. And we're going to walk with the teachers down the road. And as parents, we're going to have our children, if you can, lead this right here. Our, you believe the children are our future? Oh, well, teach them well. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Isn't that what you all like to sing graduation ceremony in the Maswara to that? I believe the children are future. Well, put them in front. And let them lead. Let them show the world that our teachers must get better. Because when teacher is comfortable, my son is comfortable. When Mrs. is in the classroom, is air-conditioned, my son is in an air-conditioned classroom. When Mrs. paid highly, she'll be more than willing to buy a pencil for him if I can't afford it. She can buy lunch for him because now she, she earns just like Priya. So my chant is pay them Priya's salary. That's all I want to talk tomorrow. Pay them Priya's salary. 6.5 can work for we. Pay them Priya salary. 6.5 can work for we. You won't play with me. You will pray you. You would be. This is your worst nightmare because you're disrespectful. So I have a chance for you. I teach my son. Pay the teachers Priya salary. 6.5 can work for we. It's either you pay them up Priya or we pay you down. You can break, reduce your salary to be on par with the teachers so that you can understand their, their, their plight. We on the ground. Pay them Priya salary. 6.5 can't work for we. Pay them Bharat salary. Because 6.5 can't work for we. Bharat, I tell you before, you have no son. You have never even raised a standard much as a child. So you can't understand how parents feel. Huh? You can just teach a dog to bark. Or your cat to meow. 
So you can understand what it feels like to have to watch a child come home after dealing with a frustrated teacher at school. So you can't talk to me about parenting or about being a teacher. My son will go out on the road tomorrow to make a statement to all politicians in this country that his teachers deserve better because he loves his teachers and they deserve better. Jack Dio did say in 2018 Granger is a ceremonial president and that Granger is playing around with the teachers. That's what you said, Barrett. He must engage the union and, and, and have proper conversation. You forget what you said, huh? But I didn't forget. So we are going outside tomorrow and in Linden, Georgetown, Essequibo, wherever you are, come out and support those who deserve it. Thank you for your time. I'll see you tomorrow, Yahweh willing. Rain or shine. You know, once I get in my protest mode, rain don't bother me, right? Rain doesn't bother me. Once you see I get out there and I decide to walk, rain doesn't bother me. Because rain don't kill people. Rain doesn't kill anybody. I am going out tomorrow with my son. Because he must see value in a struggle. Maybe he'll be the president of this country one day. And he'll understand that teachers have to walk in the sun to, to, to earn a living. No way. And my son can be inspired to be a president. And my son can say, you know what? I will never treat teachers the way this, that I saw this. They must never have a course to go on the road under my watch. See that? That's the power of raising a child well. Come out. All PNC, PPP, AFC, TUC, whatever you all are, come out. Because the politicians who are decision makers now are disrespecting our teachers. And I'm not going to have that. Do well. See you tomorrow at 9. We ready. Yahweh willing, we out there. And we are prepared to fight. <laughs>